Uh, there it is. Okay, well, um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dorothy Lofton, and I'm the Presenter Services Chair for OLC Accelerate. And uh, we're here today for a webinar on the discovery sessions. And I want to take a minute and introduce our speaker today. This is Sherry Restora, and she serves as the Director of the Coastal Office of Digital and Online Learning at Coastal Carolina University. She is an associated teaching, facil or associated teaching faculty with the Psychology Department at CCU and specializes in teaching developmental psychology classes online. She has served in higher education with the field of online and digital learning for almost two decades, including in the role of instructional designer, LMS administrator, faculty, and administrator. She presents frequently and is a longtime OLC attendee and volunteer with OLC Innovate and Accelerate conferences. This year, she is serving as the OLC Accelerate conference co-chair for us, along with co-chair for the IDEA initiative. In this role, she has been guiding the conference theme and focused through the frequent blogs and outreach opportunities. She'll be sharing with us today tips on presenting on discovery session formats, which Sherry uh, indicates are her favorite conference formats at Accelerate and Innovate. Sherry, thank you for joining us today, and I can't wait to hear from your experience. Thank you, Dorothy, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm only gonna stay on video for just a minute. I don't wanna be distracting with my video. Um, I am joining you guys from the extremely sunny Myrtle Beach, which is what you're seeing. I'm like glowing angelically right now here. Um, and so I'm gonna turn my video off in just a minute, but I wanted you to, to put a face with the name before I started sharing my screen. Um, I am going to keep up uh, the chat and then Katie and Dorothy are also going to be monitoring that chat for me. Uh, and so we'll pause towards the end so that we can actually take questions. Um, we are going to record this. And so should you have to hop off at any point, just know that the recording will be sent to you afterwards as an email, okay? Um, I do have my contact information at the end. And so, because I love discovery sessions as Dorothy just said, um, and I'm also one of our, um, our, our coaches for the Accelerate Conference, I'm happy to help you if you have any questions after the webinar as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video um, for the moment. And um, after I do that, I'm going to share my screen. If you do have any uh, any questions, please do feel free to just join, uh, just drop those into uh, the chat. You should be able to find the chat at the bottom of your screen. Okay stopping video. And then in just a moment, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and if you would, um, Katie, if you wouldn't mind, once I do share my screen, if you'll just give me a confirmation one more time that you're able to see that, then I would appreciate it. Just a second. Looks good, Sherry. We're good? All right, perfect. Um, and I am going to, I'm actually going to rearrange just a moment um, and move it over to the other screen. That way you guys are able to see the whole thing. Give me just a second. All right. Um, so this is me, um, and I want to formally welcome you to the uh, webinar on discovery sessions. And if, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we lost your screen share. Oh, okay. Let me reshare for you. Just one second. Are we back? Yes. Perfect. All right. Good. All right, so formally welcoming you part two to the discovery session webinar. Um, I want to actually give you a little bit of, uh, of an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, the little icon that you see down at the left hand side of your screen uh, that has a light bulb in it. That's actually a logo that we use to signify discovery sessions. And I like to share that with anybody who is either an attendee and is searching for different types of sessions or who's also a presenter at the discovery session so that you know that you're part of a rather large group of individuals who will be presenting. So anytime you see that logo beside any of the sessions that we're offering, that logo signifies that it is part of our very large group of discovery session webinars. 
So I'm just going to go through and um, give you a few tips about how to present, how to set up, um, the important things that, that I think have been most um, instrumental in having a successful discovery session. Um, I would ask if you wouldn't mind, um, as I'm going through and presenting, if this is your first time ever to be a discovery session uh, presenter, would you mind just dropping in there uh, a me or a yes, this is my first time or whatever it might be in the chat. Um, I'm interested in seeing how many of us that we have attending, this is your first time. I can actually see it because I'm monitoring with a second screen here. Aww. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as everybody is entering your responses, um, first of all, welcome to all of you first timers. Um, I wanted you to see this screen here where I'm wanting to make sure you understand, particularly as a first timer, um, as Dorothy said, this is my favorite type of session. Um, number one, uh, probably the third item that I have up there, this is the lowest stress form of presentation that you could possibly ever have at any conference, much less at our OLC conferences. So go ahead and take a deep breath <laughs> and let it out because you've already got yourself into a situation where this is so low stress, it's so much fun, and it's totally collaborative. You're going to see a bunch of different types of pictures that I've included with this particular presentation. And in every one of these pictures, everybody's having fun. And that's because these are super low stress. They're very easy to manage. And I think you're going to find that um, you're going to actually enjoy yourself at the conference by being able to stress a little bit less as we go forward. Oh, Karen, I'm so glad to hear that. And thank you, Barb. So this is our agenda for the day. Um, I highlighted these as kind of three big things that we're going to talk about in this brief session, just kind of deconstructing for you what is a discovery, discovery session and what you can expect. Um, also some tips on how to chunk and present your information in a very brief format, and then also some final strategies for making it dynamic, interactive, and working with a very diverse and mobile audience. And I'll explain what I mean by mobile when we get to that spot. Um, so here's where we get to start looking at some of the photos. I'm excited because I think some of the people in, um, in, in some of the photos that I've chosen to include today are actually on the call today. And so hopefully you'll see yourself in some of these previous snapshots from discovery sessions. Discovery sessions are basically a really fast paced, super engaging electronic poster format. And so think about the idea of doing a poster session in the 1990s or the 1980s or even the very beginning of the 2000s where you would set up a large poster display. Um, we've modernized that and in today's discovery session what we actually do is we use dis digital displays and mobile devices kind of like you're seeing in the right hand photo there where there's a laptop and we can present with one or multiple presenters and walk through and do an overview just like you would have done in a poster session. So if you've ever attended a poster session um, in the old school days where people would walk by, they'd stop, they'd browse, they'd ask questions and they continue going, that is essentially the same format we're going to be following here. Um, so think about that. It's very informal. You have the ability to share, you have the ability to discuss topics, but it's in a very informal way. Um, because of the fact that this is OLC, in particular, this is OLC Accelerate, everyone who will be coming back and forth um, is moderately familiar, if not um, an expert, in utilizing technology. And so we've really modernized the poster sessions in a way that we will be presenting you with um, some really interesting opportunities for how to present your material. Materials. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, we've got actually modernized and updated this over the last couple of years in such a way that not only do we have a low table like you're seeing on the left hand side there for you to put some of your materials such as your laptop, we also have a high bistro table and this year because we have this generous donation from MindEdge, one of our vendors, we will also have digital display monitors there for you so that you can actually hook up your laptop and you'll be able to not only display on your own screen but also display separately on a separate monitor. And so, does somebody have a, a comment? Okay, um, Karen, I see your comment in the uh, in the chat. We are super excited about this. Um, again, MindEdge was super kind to actually give us 15 displays. That means each person has their own digital monitor. Um, this is a great time for me to go ahead and give you a note about that if you're a presenter. Um, please make sure if you are bringing a Mac or a laptop that does not have an HDMI 
um, that you may need to actually bring an adapter with you to make sure that you can connect to the digital display. It will help all of our visitors to make sure that they can actually just uh, see your display. Um, if you're like me, you have a very tiny laptop. And so these digital displays are about 26 inches. They're much larger and they're going to make it much easier for everybody who's walking by and browsing to see your content. All right. Oh, and thank you, Erin. I see that too. Exactly. I have a tiny laptop. Yours is 11 inches. Yours is a little bit smaller than mine. Um, and Amelia, that's correct. Um, in general, with the HDMI, um, you should actually have the ability to connect. There will be a cord provided by MindEdge um, that, that actually will connect to uh, your display and to your laptop, but we'll also have facilitators there to help you, help you get connected. All right, awesome. Um, if you have attended previously, you might have actually seen us beta testing on a previous round of discovery sessions where we were trying out having projection screens, but that really wasn't feasible because we couldn't put them up for everybody. So this was a great way for us to find an opportunity to have a larger display for every one of our presenters. Um, all right, so let's talk about, um, since you have an idea of what the display will be, so you're going to bring a laptop, you're going to have both a bistro table as well as a large table to put different types of items on. We also are going to provide you with um, an electrical outlet um, as well as an electrical strip, and so you'll have the ability to charge your devices and keep everything running along, um, along the entire time frame. And so one of the things that I think is also extremely important to give you as a preparation, because we have so many of you as new uh, presenters this time is to think about the structure of the session in advance. So your session is 45 minutes long, but just like a standard uh, presentation would be for a poster, you're actually only going to present for 10 to 15 minutes and you're going to give that same presentation approximately three times. So what I would actually ask you to do is design something that's approximately five to eight slides long, whether it's a Google slideshow, um, wh whatever format you'd like to present, um, create something that's no more than five to eight slides in length, and then you're actually going to pitch that as your best idea, and you're going to talk through that with various groups of individuals as they're coming up and browsing. So think about pitching your best idea um, in five to eight slides, and then know that at the end of approximately 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to welcome a second group, and you're going to restart. And so you have the ability to actually go through and do your presentation or your pitch approximately three times in that 45 minute period. Um, so again, think about why I'm saying this is low stress. You're really only presenting for 10 minutes of about five slides. So you need to curate your idea into something that is small, um, compact, and something that you have the ability to, um, to share as readily as possible. So this is probably something, if you've been watching the OLC emails, you may have seen this photo. This is probably my favorite photo ever, and I have been participating in the OLC conferences. Um, me too, Catherine. I've been participating in OLC conferences and the discovery sessions for over 10 years, and I totally love this photo. Um, so that's a lot of people, um, and that is a discovery session. You're seeing me in the middle, and you're seeing two of my co-presenters also there with me. Um, so I'm standing at a table, and there's people surrounding us and they were listening to us as we were doing our presentation. This photo was taken after, so they weren't distracting us necessarily during it. Um, but what you're seeing is the level of engagement, and that's what I want to talk about next, because we've already talked about what it looks like when you come and set up your, uh, your device, what you can expect in terms of how to create your slides. And then here, think about what that's like if you're in a big space and there's approximately 14 other people and they each have tables, what do you need to think about doing in order to make sure that you have the ability to engage each of the audience members um, to attract them to your table? Have any of you ever attended anything like a vendor fair um, and particularly at conferences like ours where you're walking around and you're looking at vendor tables? If you've ever attended those, I want you to think about what do they do in order to get your attention? What kinds of things attract your attention and make you want to actually stop at their particular tables. So thinking about that, some of the things that you want to do and then perhaps also not do as you're setting up your table and you're beginning to think about how to engage the audience as they're coming back and forth is you want to do things that are going to get their attention. Um, so I'll point out the last bullet first. You want to stop engage and interact. So that doesn't mean to restart your presentation every, every time somebody walks up. I actually will typically do nothing more than um, wave my hand or nod my head 
um, give them a thumbs up or even hand them um, a, some kind of a material. So I'll bring handouts and I'll give them my business card or I'll give them the best tips or I'll give them whatever I've brought to decorate my table with. Um, what I have included here is another photo of a recent discovery session with my co-presenter. And what we were doing is one of us was assigned as the greeter and one of us was assigned as the presenter and then we swapped places um, during the second and then the third presentation round. And, and that worked out fabulously. And so that's something I would encourage you to do if you have the opportunity, if you do have a co-presenter, consider actually assigning somebody as the greeter and that person will welcome people as they come in, they'll usher them forward so that they can, they can hear you better um, and then make sure that everybody feels recognized. I will tell you after doing this 10 times or more that as long as you recognize somebody and invite them to your session, they'll stay. And so that's probably one of my, it's not my number one tip, I'm saving that for last, um, but it's one of my favorite tips to give you is make sure you acknowledge everybody as they come up um, and welcome them. I also like to tell you to try to make it fun and engaging. One of the things that um, I love to do is to decorate uh, our, our table display and make sure that we have things like candy bowls or popcorn. Um, last year, we had some photos taken of an individual who set up their discovery session with a lamp. <laughs> and another a number of other types of decor. So whatever you might want to do in order to decorate your display, to personalize it, to even brand it relating to your educational institution, you can do that. We will, again, we will have a power strip, and so you will have the ability to plug up multiple devices if you'd like to do that as well. Um, I want to point out on the right hand side of the screen that I'm showing you now is there are a few things that I have under the do not and one of them in particular that I want to make sure to point out is um, do not use audio and video as primary and I want to explain that because I actually use audio and video um, and Catherine is, is on here as well. We've used audio and video in our presentations um, in the past as well. So let me explain to you the tip on how to do that. If part of your presentation would benefit from having audio and video as a demonstration set that up as a secondary device and try to include um, headphones so that as individuals are listening to the audio and video, they're able to hear it a little bit more clearly. Because again, remember you're going to be in a large room with 15 presenters and you wanna make sure that they can hear any kind of audio and video well. So maybe consider including some headphones and bringing those along so that they can browse them on, um, on an independent device as well. So those work very, very well. Um, in general, just make sure that most of your presentation is visual and it's something that people can browse readily. You will have the benefit of having the very large digital display monitor at each of your stations, but if you'd like to set it up so that they can, they can browse on multiple devices, including on the digital display, then, uh, then you have that as an option. I also want to strongly encourage you to bring um, handouts or any kind of supplemental information, it's always beneficial to bring business cards with you because we want to make sure that individuals who may not have time to stay at your station but want to find additional information, that they have the ability to follow up with you. So don't forget your business cards. Make sure to bring those along so that people can grab that and, uh, and, and take that along with them too. So if you were here in the beginning as we were getting started, you may have seen me holding up my little button about the accessibility and inclusion work with the OLC area. So I'm also the, the co-chair for the accessibility and inclusion uh, subcommittee. And one of the things we like to talk about is how to make sure that we create our presentations and we present our information in a way that's inclusive of all of our participants. And so one of the ways that we do that is with our discovery sessions, we actually do have two separate tables. As I mentioned, we have a low table as well as a large, um, taller bistro table. And one of the things I would encourage you to do is if you are bringing handouts, try to put those on both of those tables so that they're accessible to anybody who's coming through and browsing. Another thing that I would encourage you to do is make sure that when you are using technology, that all of the items that you're displaying can be viewed from a distance. Remember that photo that I showed you where there were about 15 people surrounding us? Sometimes people may be four individuals behind and it's a little harder to see the information. So perhaps consider putting um, more graphics and very large text. I purposely created this particular slide as an example. You can see how large that font is for the items one through four. Um, and that's about the example of what I would encourage you to have for these five to eight slides that you, that you developed for the discovery sessions. Um, 
be conscientious of your body orientation. And one of the things I found works very well for these is to periodically gaze around, turn your body, and then also direct your audio into different areas because people will be constantly coming up from behind you, beside you, etc. Again, it works very well if you have a co-presenter to make sure that that person is also paying attention to who may be around you. We have some items at the very end of this slideshow that are from presenter services and they are example templates and they will serve you in developing really great um, templates for your slideshows to make sure that everything you're building is, uh, is inclusive as well. Um, Catherine, I saw that you were online, so you're actually featured in this particular photo. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite tips is to bring multiple devices. This is just a brief little photo of uh, some colleagues and I who were doing a presentation at a discovery session, and I don't know how well you can see this, but there are actually three laptops at that table. Do not be afraid to bring multiple laptops, particularly if you have multiple presenters definitely do so and give each of you a little task and help individuals to browse different pieces of your presentation. It's incredibly engaging. This was one of my favorite discovery sessions because we were each able to help people as they came up and it was a very individualized, personal um, type of style of communication. We really loved um, this particular one and, and even one of our presenters was, was terribly sick at the time and still did a fantastic job throughout this entire session. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and look at some of our final tips as we're wrapping up for our discovery session webinar. Some of the other things that I love to make sure that you guys are familiar with. I had already mentioned um, doing the decor and making sure that you have your personal style and your branding. Um, you will have the ability to, um, you'll have a little tent card that shows the name of your, uh, of your presentation, but I have found that in the past, it's actually beneficial if you have something like a small table display, think of like an eight and a half by 11, that you can actually have the name or something to advertise your session. Um, I like to bring those myself because it's another way of attracting individuals to your table. I cannot emphasize enough candy. Candy is truly the key. That is my number one tip bring candy. Um, if you don't have candy, if you're flying and you can't bring candy, then get candy before you get to the, the display. They always come to my stations when I have candy. They are less likely to come to my stations without candy. So I promise you candy and or popcorn seems to be one of the top keys for how to get them to engage. Once they come, they will listen, um, but you're looking at how to get them to your table. Um, so I love candy. It's one of my top tips and I love, uh, I love giving that as an opportunity to, uh, to find a way to bring them to your table. All right, so these are some final tips to think about as you're setting up your discovery session. Um, again, make sure that out of those five to eight slides, the very first one includes your session information. And that says session pound, but that's a hashtag. That's not session number. What that actually means is if you are using a hashtag such as OER stories, then you wanna make sure that you have that and you introduce that as you're telling them about your session. So you might say today's session is about OER stories. Please feel free to tweet about our session by using hashtag OER stories um, and discuss that with, uh, with them as you're starting off. One thing that I've seen over the last two years work very well is live polling. So that's one way to get them engaged. If you're comfortable with doing live polling, know that this is a great way um, to, to collect information and you can actually display the results on a secondary display screen um, as people are coming through and completing your digital poll too. So that's a great way to, uh, to engage them. We've discussed some opportunities for hands-on. Again, feel free to give them the, the headphones, feel free to give them a tablet, um, just whatever you want to do in order to engage them with your, your, uh, your information that you're wanting to display to them. Taking photos with them is not something that I had intuitively thought to do. However, as you can see from some of the photos that were displayed here, a number of my co-presenters love to do that. They actually take photos with the individuals as they're coming up, and I think that actually works really well. It's, to it's totally fun. It's something that really um, engages them in your session, and it's something that I think kind of shows the community of who OLC is and how much fun we have at our conference. 
um, tell a story, ask them for their stories. If you want to have a sign-in sheet, you can do that instead of giving out cards. Some people say, oh, I hate giving out business cards. I totally understand. Maybe have a sign-in sheet. Maybe have a separate digital display where they can type their names in. However you feel comfortable, feel free to do that. And again, I had to emphasize again, um, lamps, candy, and ambiance. And you know, Aaron, so here's the question. I actually wondered if the person who displayed the lamp borrowed it from their hotel room. And I never had the courage to ask that question, but, and I'm also not going to advocate that, but there could be ways that they might, right, see, so they might have borrowed it from their room and then politely put it back in the room. I really don't know, but it was, it was really cute. Um, it was a great display. We probably should give out, uh, give out awards for that, in fact. All right, so as we're wrapping up for the day and as I begin to take questions, I just wanted to give you this prompt. If you have um, either participated um, as a, a viewer and attendee, or if you have previously presented at a discovery session, are there other tips that we haven't shared today that might actually be something useful that you'd, you'd like for us to, uh, to share with the audience? If so, please go ahead and type those into the, uh, the chat window now and we'll be monitoring those. And I want to also point out here that we have a number of different links to various items relating to the discovery sessions. We have both a direct discovery session presenter guide that gives you some of the tips we talked about today, as well as others, um, as well as additional resources. And just this past week, I just posted a blog um, about discovery sessions, in fact, and so I also included a link to that blog that was just recently published. Thank you, Amelia. Yes, Randall, totally, drink water. Yes, always smile, Dorothy, I love that. I can't tell you how many times I have done this without sleeping, and so that's also not a great idea, but again, they're very, they're very low stress, so you could probably get away with doing it without sleeping. We do have lots of fun at OLC Accelerate, so. All right, Katie, I think this is you, um, so I'm going to hand this off to Katie, and then I'm going to continue monitoring the, uh, the questions and the comments in the chat. Thank you, Sherry. I think we've actually hit on most of these logistical items, but um, wanted to just go through these quickly before we wrap things up for today and also answer any additional questions that you might have about logistics. We've already talked about the table setup. You'll have the high counter and the low table. It will also include a chair in the event that you need to sit down there will be pieces of paper with the position numbers. Everyone who is doing a discovery session is assigned a position number so that you know which table to go to and that the attendees looking for your session know which table to look for. So there will be pieces of paper and you can see it in this top um, left-hand picture with the 10, that is going to be the position number. So you'll wanna match that up with the program listing position number and the number on the table. There will be someone, an OLC staff member, who is stationed in the foyer area to assist with any need, you know, if you need help finding your table or if you need help plugging in your um, laptop to the digital display or something like that. There will be an OLC staff member and there will also be AV and IT techs on call to assist as well. As Sherry mentioned, there will be a power strip at each of the tables so you can plug in your devices. And I mentioned it in the chat, but we also encourage everyone to upload their slides and their handouts to the conference management system. There was an email, the presenter logistics part one email that went out last Thursday that included information on how to do this. Um, there will be another presenter logistics email that will be going out later today with additional presenter considerations for all presenters as well. Here, can we have the next slide, please? Sherry? Yes, ma'am. Can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, also, with these displays, just keep in mind it is a 16-9 slide format, uh, which is which would optimize the real estate on the screen. Also, we encourage you to start and end with your session evaluation slide and encourage the attendees that you speak with to submit evaluations for your session. Um, not only do we have prizes for people who do that, we do a drawing, um, we also have prizes for presenters that have the most evaluations for their session as well. So uh, there is wireless internet in the conference space for yourselves as well as for the attendees. 
I do like to recommend, however, that you have a backup plan. Uh, we never anticipate the problem with the wireless, but you know, you never know what's going to happen. So please make sure that you do have a backup plan and have your presentation um, on your hard drive as well. And I already said that there was going to be an OLC staff member to assist as needed in the area. So with that, if there are any other questions for Sherry or for myself, uh, please feel free to ask away. I've been attempting to answer most of them as they've come in through uh, the chat. I would definitely encourage you guys to um, to take a look at the link that goes out to the presenter services and look at the templates. Um, those templates were, were wonderful. It's something we just developed over the last couple of years. And they're just little slide templates, so you can easily insert those into either Google Slides or PowerPoint or whatever format you might want. Um, but it does have those uh, the evaluation slide that Katie just pointed out on there. And so it's, uh, it's super helpful. Um, and and it, uh, otherwise, we just don't get the session evaluations that we need. So definitely do download and slide that in at the very end of your slide deck, and that would be fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, answer Colleen's question about the session evaluation slide. It was sent in that presenter logistics email. It can also be found on the presenter services webpage and the presenter FAQ webpage as well. And as we're, as we're looking at additional questions, um, I flipped my video back on for those of you that can see it. So here's an example of a candy bowl. Totally, you do not have to bring a, a glass fish bowl. Um, but candy. So anything that you might want to bring um, for them is, uh, is a great idea. I like to bring um, chocolate and peppermints because not everybody likes one or the other, but usually people will like at least one of those options. So whatever you think um, would, be, uh, would be useful, then feel free to bring that. All right. Anybody have any other questions for us? I do have also displayed here um, in our final slide, you can see my contact information. You're welcome to reach out to me. Um, and I also have, I believe that uh, logo in the, right below my email address is clickable. So that's my LinkedIn account. You're welcome to click there and contact me there if you'd rather do that um, instead of email. It is Halloween. See, that's what I was thinking too, Karen. It's Halloween and so we could all splurge and get any kind of candy we want, um, perhaps here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you, everyone. Dorothy, do you want to do a quick wrap up? Thanks, Randall. Thanks, Erin. Uh, yeah, I just want to um, say thank you to um, Sherry for, um, you know, giving us some great tips today. I really appreciate your time. And thank you to everybody who was here today. Uh, I know that um, every time I do one of these, um, webinars it's just amazing to see everybody that's involved and um, is here to learn so i hope that you all have a great time uh, doing your presentations and just a reminder to upload any slides you have or materials you have to um, the conference website uh, november 1st i think is the date we'd like to see them there by uh, thank you all again thank you katie for coming in and uh, and mom during this session as well i really appreciate it Thanks, guys.